Hey guys, welcome back. Okay, um, so um, in the last episode we kind of went over the kind of the, the theory of how we were going to put together our dynamic lights. So what I've done here is I put together um, just a little bit of a, a, a scene that can be lit. Okay, uh, just have, um, basically I've started up a new project called Unity Sandbox. It's something we can play around in. Um, and I just put together a quick scene, Unity uh, Sandbox scene. Um, I pulled over just a couple of assets from uh, the game world. Um, you can see I pulled over the archway and the floor. So, uh, now, this is really just to have something to light, guys. It's I, I, I'm not meaning for this to be, uh, you know, something we go over on how to build and stuff. Um, I've already pre-built the material for it. It's right here. Um, this is my atlas material. What I have pulled over, though, is the mesh for the torches. Now remember, guys, I bought these assets. This is not my asset. Um, somebody made this. So it's kind of upside down right now. Uh, you can see it's just a, a flat gray color. It doesn't have a texture on it yet. Um, I wanted to kind of pull over all four LODs um, separately and build the LOD system. Um, unfortunately, this was I, I set this all up in Maya, and this is all basically integrated together. There's no way to really separate them at this point. But there's nothing preventing you from building them, and I'll show you what I mean by that. So I bought this asset. Um, you can see the LOD0 is 423 vertices, and then I went in and built some LODs out of that. So I, I built this 300 vertice version, a 200 vertices version, and a 144 and you can see this is quite basic compared to this guy. Um, so what you've got here is the parent torch mesh, and this is its import uh, parameters. Um, then under that are the four LODs, and it's kind of split into two parts. It's got the torch LOD. This is the um, this would be the transform, the filter, and the renderer for that particular mesh. Okay. Um, and then it's got a default material on it, and this is going to be the same for all these guys. Okay, and then you'll see here in the in the mesh filter, this is the component that determines what the mesh looks like. Okay, this is where you set the mesh. You got LOD zero, so that's that's referring to this guy right here, which is the actual model itself, and then so on for these other guys. You see LOD one, LOD two, and so on, and you can't change any of these. Um, Except for probably the, no, not even that, not even the material. So um, that's as far as I could break it down. I can't, um, I can't build one of these, uh, but I'll show you basically how to build one if you want to do it. Um, if you want to build your models separately, um, I, it's just easier for me to build them in Maya and then um, kind of as a group and then bring them over as a group and then it just automatically sets it up for you. But of course, the downside of that is now I can't separate them <laughs> to show you guys how to build them. Um, so yeah, it's the same thing for these floor. Actually, this floor mesh doesn't have an LOD. It's just a because it's a simple floor. Basically, it's uh, I think eight triangles for that whole floor. So there's no reason to build an LOD out of it. And then this archway has a bunch of LODs. But again, these are just assets from the game. It's just to give us something to to light. Okay, so you can see I set up. Um, just a real quick scene, a few mesh, a uh, few archways. Um, I built a, a kind of a large uh, floor so it wouldn't fall off, and I've got a first-person camera controller in here. So if I hit play right now, okay, I've got it set right here. Um, you can see it actually bobs like you, like you're in first-person mode. It's not just a strict, um, you know, kind of forward motion. It's uh, it's actually got a kind of a nice nice camera system actually for for a default system so you can see we have no light in the scene except for ambient uh yeah ambient lighting um which is very flat uh these texture actually does have a normal map on it but you can't see it in this kind of light so it looks just like a flat wall right so yeah that's where we're at right now. You can see right now we should have, um, yeah, we're, we're running at about 150 
or so frames per second, which we should be. There's no lights. There's only there's a very minimal amount of, of uh, textures here, here um, and and geometry. Uh, basically, we're doing eight batch calls, eight draw calls is what that is. Um, we're not batching, uh, probably because that might be a function of not being uh, Unity Pro. This is Unity Free, um, and maybe they don't have batching in Unity Free. I'm used to having batching because uh, I've been working with Unity 4 Pro. Um, that might be a reason to go to Pro, <laughs> to be honest, because we're going to need it batching for sure. Because um, this really should be able to batch almost as a single draw call. Um, they all use the same texture. Uh, there's no lighting, so that should really be one batch call or one draw call. But anyway, um, so yeah, that's kind of the quick scene I, I threw together. So let's um, let's start putting together this this torch, and, and uh, I'll show you guys, you know, kind of what the what the components are. So um, the first thing we want to do. Oh, I guess I should tell you. I should show you what I, what I brought over for this this um, this torch. So uh, there's no materials except for this atlas material, which I built just for these walls. Okay, um, I haven't put together the materials yet. We'll do that as we do this. But I I had to bring over the torch. I talked about the LEDs for the torch. Um, the scene is just the scene. I brought over a sound. This torch loop sound. Okay, um, which I probably can't. Not sure if I can play this. Oh yeah. So you can hear it's just a fire, kind of campfire sound. Um, I brought over all the textures I think we're going to need. Uh, hopefully I got them all. Um, if I missed any, we'll we'll find out. Um, this texture atlas is of course just for the walls and, and the floor. Um, but we've got this campfire left and right. We've got a smoke texture. We've got a spark texture for the sparks. Um, we've got a diffuse map for the the torch mesh itself, and also a normal map for the torch mesh. So hopefully that's everything we need. Um, I hope. So let's start by going into our mesh meshes and grab a torch, and we'll just throw it into the scene. Okay. So let's see. Let's focus in on that. Well, he ended up way back there. Why did you do that? <laughs> Come back over here. Okay. All right. He's way down there. I don't understand why he didn't show up where I wanted him to. All right. Let's pull him back over. Uh, and let's see. Where are you at? There you are. Okay. Um. So in this scene, guys, uh, one thing is obviously, I don't know if you can tell, um, but he's tiny. There you go. In fact, I can't even see him. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to scale him up some. Let's try a hundred fold scale. See what that gets us. Okay. That looks a little better, maybe. Let's try pulling them back. Uh, we'll rotate him, say, 90 degrees on the y-axis. And then shove him back against the wall. See, that looks like about a pretty good scale, so right about like such. Okay, so that's where we'll put our torch. So there you go. That's a... Uh, so you can see, gang, <clears throat> what this mesh consists of when it, it gets actually pulled into the, to the world. And this is what I was talking about. If you have four different meshes that you built and you've imported them separately, what you would end up with is this kind of torch LOD 0, LOD 1, one 2, and 3, right? Um, what you could do is go game object, create empty, pull this out here, and then on this game object you could add a component... Uh, then a rendering. I think it's under rendering. Um, let's see. LOD group. Okay. And then 
for each LOD group, you add the individual mesh itself. Okay, that's how to do that manually. If you have, you know, if you have a, um, and I might even be able to do it. Let's see if it lets me pull this in. Yeah, there you go. So you could actually do this manually like such. So you could actually pull the import group in rather than the um, the mesh itself, but it's the same idea. So if you pulled in all four of these guys, okay, I have to add another insert before. So we've added our th our next LOD group and then throw that in there. Let me parent him. And then what you do with that game object is so you've got your, your game object with your LODs, and then you could actually end up renaming that torch. Okay. And there you go. It ends up the same thing. Uh, if I recalculate his bounds a little bit and scale them up. Okay. So what I've got here is a torch that's basically the same as this guy. I think we've created pretty much the same thing. I just would have to rename all this stuff. But he's got the LOD group. This actually controls the drawing, which LOD gets shown. Right now we're looking at... Um, so if you look at the, where the camera's sitting, uh, these LODs aren't really where I want them. There's this guy's LODs. Yeah, that's where I want them. Um, so we could drop this LOD down to 1%. I'm going to drop this whole down to 5%. And I think this one's supposed to be at 15. And this one's at 25, I think. So there you go. So you can see, right, if you, walk, if you look at the camera right here, that as soon as it hits that threshold of 25%, it drops to LOD1. And if you look close, and it's a little bit hard to see, I know, because we're, we're not really... Uh, we don't have a texture on this yet, but if you back off just a little bit from right here to here, you can see the LOD pop pop out. Okay, um, you probably won't be able. To, you, you can see that one too. Um, I should say, guys, that uh, it may seem like really obvious that this there's a pop right there, but remember that um, in the final version there's going to be smoke and sparks and fire all in here. You're not going to be able to see it. At least I don't think so. And if you can, we'll, we'll, we'll adjust it. So anyway, I'm going to delete this out. I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. Um, that LOD group, if you had separate models, uh, as opposed to what I had, which was a single model. Okay, um, so that's our first step. Um, let's get a material on here. Okay, guys. So the first thing we want to do, or the next thing we want to do, is we've got this this nice mesh out here, but we want to get a material on this, so it's not this ugly gray color. So let's build our material. Now you guys remember I told you that um, materials are create a material in the materials folder. Um, materials are a combination of textures and. Uh, shader programs okay now the shader we're using here is a standard um, standard unity shader so it's pretty well set up for us um, with the with the maps that we need so I'm gonna call this um, let's see we'll call this torch material okay um, so we're gonna render opaque that's what we want um, they've got a, a kind of a new term here in Unity 5, the albedo map, uh, which is red, green, blue, and transparency alpha. Um, I'm used to calling this the diffuse map, so if you guys hear me say diffuse, that's what I mean. It's the same kind of deal. Okay. So what we want to do is go into our textures, which I pulled over, and we want to grab the torch D, that stands for torch diffuse, and we'll throw it into this box. So you can see down here, that's what it looks like. Uh, by the way, you guys, you can change that if you would rather, you know, see something different. But uh, I just use the ball, so it's fine. So the only other one we're going to use is the um, the normal map. So I've got the torch flash n for normal map. We're going to throw that into here. 
Okay, you can see it gets bumpy, the, the, the texture. So there you go, that's our, uh, that's our material. So I'm going to take that material, I'm just going to drag it right on top of the torch. Okay, um, you might not be able to see it that well because it's up against the wall and nothing's lit, really. So let's pull it up here a little bit. And you see that um, I've actually pulled it onto LOD uh, 0, but LOD 1, 2, and 3 are still using this default material. So we actually, we need to pull this onto all four of our um, meshes. So let's go ahead and do that. And I can just drag it right onto the thing, and it should load it up as, a, as, as the component. So let's make sure we got everything here. Yeah, looks good, guys. Let's just double check that. There you go. It gives you a better view. So you can see it's it's definitely on that all four of our LODs. All right, so that's good. We got our material. Okay. Um, since we have it, maybe what we'll add in the since um basically this next thing goes on the, on this parent object. It's the last thing that we're going to stick on the parent object, I think, except for maybe a script or two. Uh, yeah. Um. So I'm going to add a component right here, and I'm going to go audio, and we're going to do audio source, okay? So you can see there's a whole bunch of parameters here. Um, the main thing we need here is the actual sound itself. So let's look at this torch loop sound that we had, and let's grab that in there. We'll drop that in. Okay. Um, The audio mixer group we don't really need to worry about too much. Uh, we will play on awake and we're going to loop the sound. Okay, the rest of this stuff I think we're going to leave alone, except for the max distance I'm going to drop down to 80 meters. Okay, rather than 500 meters. Okay, so let's take a look and, and see what that sounds like. So you can definitely hear that that sound going off. And if I back away, theoretically, it should fade off. If you look at the screen um, on the right side, you can see where the red line is. It should stop playing. Hmm, something's going wrong here. Why is that not stopping? Let's check our uh, settings, guys. Okay, guys, there it is. I figured it out. Um, I think, although I haven't tested this yet, so we'll find out. But um, you can see the spatial blend right now is set all the way to 2D. You need to set this to 3D. Uh, 2D sounds always play, uh, no matter how far away you are from the, the source, whereas 3D sounds should play um, based on the distance away from the, the sound itself. Um, and it's actually kind of cool they've added this. this you can uh, like adjust between them, kind of like a halfway point. I guess would be halfway between 2D and 3D. It's kind of interesting. So anyway, let's take a look and see if that works. So there's the sound. Yeah, there you go. Now it's fading off. So there you go, guys. I learned something new about Unity uh, 5 that wasn't in Unity 4. So cool. So you can see we get louder as we get closer. This camera seems really low to the ground. I think I might have <laughs> But that's all right. I won't mess with it too much. OK, so there's we, we've got our sound setting. Um, what I'm going to do now is we'll add the fire effect. Um, 
No, I take that back. What we're going to do now is add the light source. Okay, so let's do that. Um, what I'm going to put this on is the main, and I'm going to um, create an empty object underneath of it. And we're going to call this uh, simply light source. Okay, we can do that because it's under the torch. Okay, so we know this is the torch. So this is the, the light source that's going to be under the torch. Um, so let's add a component. We're going to add a um, what do I want to add here? A rendering component. Light. There we go. We're going to add a light. Okay. So if you take a look, it's added it right at the the um, the origin of the the parent object, which is you know what you would expect. So I'm going to drag this out here to be more or less right about where this torch would be. It's kind of right in here, maybe a little higher, because the flames will actually be kind of up here. So okay. Now you can already see, guys, um, just with this basic light point light. We haven't even set it up yet, but it's also it's already bringing out the uh, the bump map, the the normal map on this wall, which is very nice. Okay. Um, it would be nice if we had a shadow that we could hook into this. Um, I got these set. Let me let me just check and make sure we've got these set up to cast shadows. Uh, yeah, they do. The cast and receive. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and run that and see what it looks like. Uh, not really seeing shadows. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there's why. Soft shadows. There you go. That's what we wanted. So now we've got some, some shadows going on, guys. I hadn't set up my light source yet. See, there's a lot of settings that, that could affect shadows, so... Um, yeah. Alright. So we've got this about where we want it. Um, this mesh right here, I'm actually going to turn off his casting shadows. Uh, for all of the LEDs. I don't necessarily want that that torch mesh shed to be casting a shadow itself. Um, I will allow it to receive shadows though. Okay, so the only shadows we're casting are um, from the geometry itself, and you can see even back onto the cube floor if it's casting shadows. So that's good. All right. So we've got our light. We've got him casting soft shadows. You can change that to hard shadows. Uh, at this point it's probably not going to make a whole lot of difference. But yeah. Okay, so let's start setting this up a little bit. Um, so we, we've got a point light. Um, we're going to give them a range of, let's give them a range of 15. And we're going to change this color. Okay guys, so we're going to change the color and I've got some numbers already. So I, I kind of know what 251, um, 242, and a blue value of 157. So that gives it kind of a nice yellow glow. Um, I'm not sure I'm liking where this is sitting. It's bugging me, it's not centered. that it probably matters too much. Um, I'm going to set the intensity to 1.5. Um, looks good. So we're going to leave them the soft shadows. Uh, leave all this kind of alone. Um, I've got the bias on this guy set to 0.09. 09. 
Um, let's see how that looks. Uh, no cookies. Um, no halos. Uh, none of all this stuff. The render mode is going to be auto. Uh, Clean mask will be everything. Okay, so there you go. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. Just kind of from the perspective of the camera. So it's kind of nice, right? It brings out the, the bump map on the walls a little bit. Um, so yeah. All right, 